in the 1950s. 17 million people a year were visiting Blackpool. And this most vulgar of resorts now had its own rude star, Frank Randall. Frank Randall was a comedian from Wigan. He was the most raucous, um, irrepressible, terrifying figure, actually, as a man. He was a monster. Crates of beer would be delivered to his dressing room. He would then proceed to smash all the mirrors in his dressing room, either with his empties or with uh, a gun from his collection of Luger pistols. Randall pushed the coarse humour of the music hall to new levels of anarchic, comedic invention. Frank, on stage, was wild. It's said that he had nine different sets of false teeth for different occasions, and he kept them in jam jars in the dressing room. Um, and he had pape mash ones, which, when he went on stage, as soon as, as soon as he got heckled, he'd fling them at the audience. Randall created characters to play on taboos, like the still sensitive subject of drink. One of his most rude creations was the hiker, bottle of beer in hand, belching and farting. All the time he's drinking from a great big bottle marked Old Slop's Ales, and he would belch, gigantic belches. Old Slop's Ales! And his famous catchphrase phrase was, uh, "By gum, I up some stuff last night. <laughs> I sent some of this to be analysed, and I got a telegram back saying your horse has diabetes." The hiker also confronted audiences with anxieties of sex and age. This dirty old man had a strange phallic stick, a libidinous prop all the better to chase young girls. But he'd go over the edge because uh, he'd be surrounded by girls from chorus line who were dressed as uh, hikers, so they'd be, hey, gum, she's a hotten. Uh, and he'd get excited and preapic and his stick would start shaking. Hello, Andy. I've just passed a couple of tarts on the road, you know. They were a couple of hotten's. I said they were a penny for their thoughts. Ooh, she gave me such a clout across love. I said, what to do with you? I only said a penny for your thoughts. Eee, she said, I thought you said a penny for my shorts. <laughs> and Randall got laughs from the biggest taboo of all, death. I were at funeral till the day, a little lad come up to me, he said, how old is he? I said, I'm 82. I he said, I don't think it's much use thee going home at all. <laughs> and the carrots would get more and more obstreperous. It was very cold that morning, limousine couldn't leave crematorium, so we had to use the ashes to get the wheels going, etc. Frank Randall's rude because he refused to behave. He took that tradition of working class innuendo, of the celebration of drunkenness and bad behaviour, and pushed it to an extreme that nobody else at that time really matched. People often compare him to George Formby. Every year when the summer comes round, off to the sea I go. George Formby was a, was a comparatively respectable working class lad who had cheeky little songs and cheeky little jokes. Randall wasn't cheeky. Randall was filthy. Randall's flair for filth made him the target of a moral crusade conducted by those eager to put a stop to the loose morals they thought had flourished during the Second World War. Frank, I think, was perceived as a threat by the, uh, the Rotary Club of Blackpool, by the watch, certainly by the Watch Committee in Blackpool. At Blackpool Magistrates in October 1952, Randall was charged with contravening the 1843 Theatres Act. He had been performing material on the central pier before it had been formally vetted. And Mr Nugent, prosecuting on behalf of the Director of Public Prosecutions, told the court. People go to these performances to be entertained and not to be disgusted. 
but Randall continued to defy all attempts to censor him. In Cinderella, um, when he was supposed to deliver his line and he walked to the apron of the stage and he said to the audience, at this point in show, I'm supposed to say to Cinderella, I've come to cut your twatter off, but buggers won't let me. So they arrested him and dragged him off and fined 30 quid for that one. There's a myth, it's a wonderful story, but sadly it's a myth, it didn't happen at Blackpool, that Randall was so fed up of being arrested in the court cases and the hassles that he hired an aeroplane and flew over Blackpool and bombarded it with toilet rolls. It's a true story, but he bombarded Accrington, not Blackpool. Excuse me.